So a study done on air quality in California and Colorado has found that benzene produced by gas and propane stoves migrated throughout homes. Mm. Mm. What are the implications for us here in Jamaica? Um, how can this information and what has been gleaned help us um, to learn about this and other pollutants that possibly are affecting our health? Joining us now to have this discussion, Poison Information Coordinator. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a title. Mm -hmm. with the Caribbean Poison Information Network, Sharika Whitelock Balancing. Good morning. Thank you for being Good morning, here. Sharika. Good morning. Thanks for having this, me. Then this is not scary now? Uh, it, it is scary, depending on who is looking on the data, right? Um, so, you know, in Jamaica, it has always been our practice that we, not under the cooking gas stove, but we do cooking on the outside, especially in rural Jamaica. And when you look on the studies, it not only speak to benzene, it speak about nitrogen, dioxide and it speak about carbon monoxide right T talk us through what is benzene mm. benzene was it actually benzene benzene it's it's uh, what i would call a toxic chemical you have um the, the chemical class you have benzene you have toluene they all come in one category and they are very toxic oh, no. mm. in terms of the amount of emissions we have always had a problem in measuring that in jamaica and we could infer to the riverton city issue where most of the time nepa has to go out and check the air quality to see persons who are living in proximity to the dump how much they're exposed to one of our good qualities here or what i would say what would favor us in jamaica is how our houses are built and the ventilation and the windows compares to other countries mm -hmm. because we we are not we are a tropical country and so we have more window spaces we have more ventilation going on when you look on a study in a first world country like maybe america or the uk and you're going to look at a tropical country in jamaica you start thinking about what's the difference in terms of how buildings are set up what's the difference in terms of airflow and also what makes up the building itself that can cause fumes to be absorbed in there, to be trapped in there, compared to how they dissipate and how it flows across that environment. So yes, we can be of concern here in Jamaica and why? Because you notice our housing infrastructure have changed over the years. Correct. And I've been observing, and it's of concern to me, how smaller our windows are becoming mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. with new constructions and the internal materials that we're using. Now we have um, dry walls being used in the homes compared to before. We have more persons using air condition in, instead of using natural ventilation within their home. One of the, 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 the drawbacks for us is that we don't have monitoring or biomonitoring devices within the homes, and we will not be able to afford that. Um, years ago, when I was doing volunteer service in the UK with a senior person, you have systems set up where you have gas monitoring devices. It's like you have a smoke detector. Yeah. A smoke de detector, right. yes. Right. And if it, it measures the amount of emission if someone um, elderly living by themselves and it can detect it, it sends a trigger effect, and the organization would know how much the person has been exposed to. Uh, is it safe to say that we largely have more gas stoves? We largely would have more gas stoves. We do, America. we do, it's a 92 fact. 92% of households across the island use gas stoves for yes. cooking, right? This is according to a PIOJ 2019 survey on living conditions. So what do we then take from this to help us? One, two, mm -hmm. how much emission is too much emission <laughs> over time. If you cook a meal, what is the level of emission? If you cook a meal over 10 years. But you can't, you see, you can't see because can't persons measure. cook different ways and different meals take different time. I, um, off my hand, I can't tell you the benzene threshold, but what you would do is look on the threshold for a person within an eight hour period. And that is how you would measure it. So when you're looking on exposure, how long should someone be in an environment and exposed to a particular element within an eight hour period? Mm. And then you look on that, the frequency, how often does that happen within a week, within a month? And that is how you look on the bioaccumulation, the frequency, the threshold value. Um, for us, I would say that basically Jamaica will not be in 
the, um, will not be able to have all persons having electric stove according to or economy according to how persons can afford and our living conditions. So we go to the next best fit, precautionary measures, ensure that we have proper ventilations within our home. For, for homes in first world country, they come with a vent. Mm -hmm. So the Good stoves idea. are made with vent and so that exhaust thing goes out. For us, are, we, we go I with ask, the windows. Let me yes. go back to the first precautionary measure. So you're saying if the home is well ventilated, the threat is low? It's always low because it's ventilation. The gas will dissipate. Okay. I want to ask, therefore, Sharika, I mean, we've been talking about the home, mm -hmm. but, but mm, so we have cook shops. Mm -hmm. Yes. That the, is a home, and we're cooking in the home to yes. sell in the, sto in the sto they, storefront. Yes. Um, we have canteens. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where, where the people cook at school. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, we have restaurants yes. where people are cooking over the eight hours that we've discussed Precisely. in places that are not as ventilated. Yes. So what are, I would, I would say, the precautions, the processes, the policies? All right. In terms of like the restaurant, and, and, and we have to be very clear, you have different types of restaurants. So right. you'd have the formal restaurants that would be in a licensed food establishment by the public health department. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you'd have persons would have their informal restaurants. Those that you would find in a well-established place, you would expect that they would have their vents and they'll have everything in place in terms of occupational health and safety because they go through the formal line of inspection. Now, those that are more informal, you will not find that. And what you would have to do is encourage them to have that type of ventilated environment to ask um, to ask that type of facility to have biomonitoring devices it's just saying the ideal but it's not realistic if we so have is it expensive it would be expensive prohibitive to, 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 to not only to set it up but also for the monitoring for the checking and then uh, usually when you have biomonitoring engineering devices in at least once per year person should go in to do a medical so that you can check to see their threshold. It would be like the same thing with persons who use specific type of pesticides. They should go in at least once per year mm -hmm. to check their levels of exposure. Um, so our precautionary principle is this, for those that can afford it, who live in specific home and they can afford to have uh, electric stove, if they can afford to have the vent over the gas stove, they should. In terms of policies now, the government now need to um, look on what it is we have in place in terms of public health. Uh, how are we now going to start monitoring homes, especially for vulnerable populations? How often do we go into home to check their indoor air quality? And we can also match if we see numerous children having eye incidents, so there's a prevalence of asthma within a particular area, then you start doing the environmental assessment. To see Is benzene the only thing that we're looking for in terms of toxins? No, I mean nitrogen, nitrogen dioxide, it, it does have a respiratory effect and also the carbon monoxide, okay. but mm. the benzene is more toxic, okay. right? So that, that is what, in terms of policy and what government can do, you have to start monitoring vulnerable areas. And when you look on the, um, the, the incidents that come in within the health facility, so if you see eye asthmatic cases in a particular area, you try to find out what is causing it, what are the factors, what's the living condition, and what could contribute to it. Mm -hmm. And that's in terms of policy. All right. So yes. in terms of real life recommendations, you're saying if you have a gas stove in your home, ensure that you have the proper ventilation. Yes, so and put it close to windows. I usually try to put your stove close to a window area and you open your Most Jamaicans so will put the stove right under the window. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. That, that, is the, that is the now safest thing to do. And then okay. in years to come, we'll see what happened in our country. Okay. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Poison Information Coordinator with the Caribbean Poison Information Network. Sharika Whitelock Balancing. After the break, the NAJ is calling for advanced practice nursing law. What is that? We'll find out after this break.